from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. can match our driving energy. But along with our ability to get work done goes our capacity for play. The pursuit of happiness is a national heritage, and Americans everywhere exercise the right to choose the pleasures most agreeable to their tastes and best suited to their pocketbooks. Today, pleasure-seeking has become part of our national life, and satisfying this appetite is an important factor in our national economy. Few of us realize just how much this quest for more pleasurable living influences the things we do. It even patterns the clothes we wear and governs the friendships we make. Because Americans discovered that the cigarette adds to the pleasure of work as well as to the pleasure of play, a great new industry was born. Less than a hundred years ago, the cigarette was unknown, and tobacco grew only on a few southern farms. Just after the war between the states, an enterprising Carolina farmer built the first factory for the processing of tobacco. It wasn't long before Washington Duke's packaged tobacco caught on, and neighbors for miles around were rolling their own. The demand for makings was so great that customers sometimes drove out from town to meet the tobacco man. In those days, of course, only the gentlemen smoked. Today, the tobacco from which your cigarette is made grows in fields covering thousands of square miles. After the tobacco has ripened in the warm southern sun, it will be harvested. On tobacco lands farms are curing barns, where controlled heat turns the leaves to a rich gold, a gold which means money in the farmer's pockets when his crop goes to market. At the auction warehouse, when the buyer sees the pile of really fine, ripe tobacco, the kind used in the manufacture of your cigarette, he tells the auctioneer that he wants that fine tobacco and will pay the highest price. From the auction floor, the leaves go to a vast city of tobacco aging warehouses. Tobacco goes to the cigarette factory when its flavor has been improved and made milder by natural aging. To the blend of ripe, sweet leaves of the choicest American tobaccos is added just the right amount of aromatic Turkish. On its way to the cigarette making machines, the right combination of the world's best tobaccos is sliced into long, clean shreds. Now the light and fluffy blend of the finest tobaccos that money can buy pours out onto a moving strip of razor-thin paper to make a cigarette three miles long. Each three-mile-long cigarette is cut into nearly 70,000 individual cigarettes. The actual growing and processing of tobacco provides a livelihood for millions of people, but many more share indirectly in the making of a cigarette. For example, almost 15 million packs of your cigarettes are made every day. On each pack sold in the United States, there is a little blue tax stamp. For each stamp, the manufacturer pays the United States Treasury seven cents. Every day, one manufacturer alone pays a federal tax amounting to more than a million dollars. Today's revenue may help strengthen the nation's defenses, Army, Navy, or Air Force. The check for tomorrow's tax stamps may be used in some part of a great public works project. Day after day, the U.S. tax on cigarettes contributes directly and substantially 
to making America a better land for all to live in. Among the millions who share indirectly in the making of your cigarettes are the men of the timberlands. Wood provides the pulp used in manufacturing the cardboard cartons and the cellophane in which your cigarettes are packed. Western farmers grow flax for tobacco lands Acousta Mill, where the world's finest cigarette paper is made. Many thousands help to keep your cigarettes moving toward their destination. Truckers of the cigarette fleet are regular customers along every highway in all the 48 states. Your cigarettes travel first to 6,000 wholesale distributors and then on to more than one million retail outlets. Merchants know that whatever else they sell, a supply of cigarettes will be a convenience to their customers. By spending a small percentage of the cigarette dollar for sales promotion, the manufacturer popularizes his product and helps wholesaler and retailer increase sales and profits. This work is distributed among hundreds of thousands from the boys who deliver magazines and newspapers to your favorite movie stars. Many artists who make our lives more pleasurable find that there's a common bond between their own profession and your cigarette. To the artist, the most genuine satisfaction of all is the knowledge that his work brings added pleasure to millions of people everywhere. Oh, the times without number, darling, when I say to you, do you love me as I love you? As Americans travel across their amazing land, busy at work or hard at play, they take for granted the pleasurable companionship of the satisfying product that comes out from tobacco land. Within less than a hundred years, the green fields of tobacco land have made a mighty contribution to the welfare and the happiness of the people of a great nation. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.